And on the back, we're going to take and redraw our outline. Um, if we can find the center seam here. On this. There. And you can line up the sound hole edges that were marked on this template to make sure that what you're drawing in the back of the guitar matches what's on the top of the guitar. The sound hole is a guide for that. that should be it, just about there. Now in this template that I have, um, I've also marked the locations of all the braces where they're going to go on the steel steam guitar. And at intersections of those braces, I have drilled little holes through the soundboard. And I can use this to mark where all the braces have to go on the soundboard. And I just lay the template in its proper location. Why did I pick it up? I don't know. Um, take my pencil, make sure I got lots of lead sticking out and just run around and put little circles through all those holes. And it inevitably forget one of them. Okay, once you've got all the lines drawn out on the soundboard where the braces are going to go, we can start to build them. The first thing we're going to put on is the bridge patch. And this goes right underneath the bridge. Um, it has to be a hardwood like rosewood or maple. I've used maple for this because I have some maple lying around. And uh, it's about 3 30 seconds of an inch thick and dimension to fit the markings you got on the soundboard there. Uh, this uh, essentially stops the string ends from tearing through the soft spruce because the holes will get drilled through here that the pegs come, the bridge pins come through from afterwards. The strings will come down here and lock on to this piece. So you need a piece of hardwood like maple. So I've shaped that and I rounded the edges that aren't going to touch the X braces. So this edge and these edges here are rounded. The X braces edges are enough square to fit tight against the X braces. <clears throat> and we're going to glue that on. Now I'm gluing this on. I put glue on here. Uh, the position of it is fairly critical. So I like to put it on there and just hold it with my fingers giving it some pressure until the glue starts to grab before I put the clamps on. And that's not bad. Now I've got a block of wood I use as a call on here. I have my piece of leather stropping thing underneath. And I'm just going to use three of these big C clamps through the sound hole to clamp that on with. Now while that's drawing, the next piece we're going to put on is the upper transverse graft. Uh, it's a flat piece um, made out of scrap of what we cut off from the edges of the soundboard. Um, so the grain runs along this way and is up and down like so. Um, and it's an eighth of an inch thick. So you take it from the scrap you cut off from the edge of the soundboard and fashion that. And that'll go on there. And again, you need a call to go on top of it to clamp it. And we'll clamp that one on the same way. So the glue is dried. This um, graft that's up here, I have now um, taken and sanded it to have it's got a kind of a gentle curved profile and uh, tapered off the ends a bit. And uh, through, right through the center, you've got to carve a dish out of here because this is where the access to the truss rod will be eventually. You've got to make room for the wrench to come through here to access the truss rod. Um, so I've carved that out almost right down to the soundboard. So the next thing we're going to do is the four finger braces, which essentially get laid out here. And uh, um, they're a, a quarter inch square. Um, and these, all you want to do with these is you want to trim them uh, a bit because they don't square onto where the X-brace is going to be. It's a bit of an angle. So you just give them a little bit of sand so they're going to match the angle that they're going to match the X-brace with there. It's not too critical because these were, once these are glued, we're going to carve them down into a, a sloped shape. And they won't actually make solid contact with the X-brace. But it makes it look a little better that way. Now all these braces that we have on here, they get shaped into kind of a, a pyramid shape. 
Um, and all we're going to do with these uh, braces, these particular ones, the uh, fan braces, finger braces if you want to call them that, they just get slanted right down to nothing at the ends. And I just got my three quarter inch chisel here doing this fairly carefully. <laughs> it's really easy to slide off and take a chunk out of the sound board. When you get down close to the end, this kind of take it, take it slower. The last little bit you can get off with uh, sandpaper. Like so. And we'll do this to all these six braces. The only difference being on the sound hole braces, uh, these ends where they intersect the brace, these won't go down to nothing, they'll leave them with an eighth of an inch height on the ends of these braces so they can make contact and provide support uh, for the sound hole area as a, as a unit bound to those braces. And once you have the two faces of that sloped down like this, take your chisel and knock the edges of them off like this, and that gives you your, your pyramid shape. Now, the two X braces cross, obviously. Um, so we notch both of them out so they'll fit together. Now what you want to do is take your blanks and make sure they fit, because they should fit and stop tight against the sound hole brace here and sit against the edge of the bridge patch straight. If they don't, do a little trimming to get things uh, lined up there and make sure that the edges of these uh, finger braces here don't protrude underneath the edge of that brace. Once you've got that fine, um, erase the lines you had drawn here for the X braces. We're going to draw new lines because you may move things a bit. So get one um, and you're happy <clears throat> in place and redraw the edges of it just where the, where, where the two are going to cross. Now I've labeled that one TD, which is top down. So, so I know this is the top of it, and that this one's going to have the down notch in it. So this one's going to have a notch carved out of the bottom of it. Then take the second brace and put it in place, making sure it feels, fits, of course, and redraw it in the same way. And I've marked it top up because it's going to have a brace uh, notch on the top of it. Put that aside. Bring the other one back. And now, mark, get it lined up lengthwise where you're going to have it, in place, and mark on that where the lines are, where the other braces are going to cross. Just like so. Then take those lines, extend them onto the bottom of the brace, and continue them across. Now I've drawn those lines on the braces and here where the other one crosses and I've extended them up to the top. This is the brace that's going to have the notch out at the top. Now I extend them up here and join them across. And I'm going to use a uh, saw here to cut out the notch, but keep the saw on the inside of the line and um, a little shy because we want this joint to be quite tight. In fact, we want it to be over tight at this point in time and then we'll fine tune it with a file once we get going. And go halfway through the brace. And then once you've cut both sides down about halfway through, we just take a quarter inch chisel and uh, clean out what's in the middle there. And then start checking your fit. See if they fit together. <laughs> 